I think I am, yes, I am live right now. I know that a lot of you are getting uh, preparations together for your Memorial Day celebrations, uh, but I just wanted to stop in just for a few minutes. Uh, just to say hi and see how everyone is doing. Um, I'm going to wait just a little bit longer to see if um, we can get more folks to join in. Like I said, I don't expect a lot of people uh, to be here uh, this <clears throat> excuse me, this morning, uh, you know, because I know a lot of people are, uh, you know, uh, starting their Memorial Day celebrations. So we're just going to wait just a couple more seconds until I get, uh, you know, see if more people come in. For those of you who are joining in, um, please feel free to, uh, you know, comment on who your authorized administrator is, what state you're going to be testing in, is it your first time testing or your second or your third? Um, are you currently in your training program or you know, are you, you know, going to be starting a training program soon? Have you already completed your training program? Uh, you know, whatever your situation is, but please feel free to uh, comment in the comment section, okay? Um, so guys, I do these, hi Veronica, how are you? Um, I do these live streams for you and I would love, love if y'all would be more interactive. Yes, be more interactive uh, because that will let me know what your needs are, right? Because I am not a mind reader, I'm not, but um, it'll let me know what your needs are. And um, especially if you have any questions, don't hesitate to, um, you know, comment with your questions, okay? Or if you have any uh, concerns, all right? So um, thank you, Veronica, I'm doing well. I'm doing well on this Memorial Day. Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with this live stream. Hi, Elsa. How are you? Thank you for joining in on this live stream. So um, this live stream is basically just to give you all a little bit of information about a new series that I want to start. OK, and I just want to get your opinion if I should go for it. Or if I should just, uh, you know, don't do anything with it, right? But the new series that I want to start uh, producing videos on is, um, I want to call it Real Talk. Um, and a lot of times I think that, um, you know, people, especially when you're students, you know, teachers try to be, I don't know, um, sensitive to your feelings or, you know, um, you know, they think, you know, more about your feelings or, or talk to you in a manner in which they don't want to hurt your feelings um, instead of just giving it to you wrong, right? So this real talk is going to be just that. I'm going to give you like this information raw. I'm going to be real with you, especially when it comes to training. Um, you know, whether you're, cur you're currently a nurse aid student or you've already, you know, successfully completed your training program and now you are a candidate, you know, waiting to be uh, testing or tested. Um, we're going to talk about, um, you know, instructions, how we as instructors um, instruct. And later on, once I get um, you know, once I get, um, I can't even think right now, once I get this series built up, um, you know, actually have more people at the table talking to me, whether it's, you know, in person or virtual, okay? Because um, I think that it helps a lot when you hear 
when you're able to hear other people's experience with their training um, and with their testing, okay? Um, San Jose, California, all right, Veronica. Yes, you smashed that CNA exam last month. Awesome, congratulations to you. I'm so happy to hear, guys. Let me tell you, like, when I receive comments on people passing and they say that, you know, the reason they passed was, you know, due to my videos, I just, you know, feel all warm and mushy inside. It makes me feel so good that I'm able to help so many people, um, you know, worldwide, you know, worldwide. So um, I'm, I'm excited for you, Veronica, on your new, um, you know, career path, your venture um, into, you know, actually, you know, start working as a certified nurse, nursing assistant. So that is awesome. Hi, LaShonda. Hey, how are you? Long time no hear from Miss LaShonda. I hope you are doing well. Awesome. All right, guys. So um, I also wanted to cover, so now you know about my new series, you know, just give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you think that the new series would benefit you all. Um, and then also, um, I just wanted to address Oh, thank you, LaShonda. Y'all are so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad. I appreciate you all. I really do. Um, without you all, my YouTube channel would not be. Trust me, it would not be. So I appreciate each and every one of you. I um, also wanted just to go, you know, talk about some of the comments or questions that I've been receiving. And then you are most welcome, Veronica. And then if you all have any questions, um, you know, again, please feel free uh, to ask, okay? So um, one comment that I do want to address um, is a comment that was made, um, uh, uh, I think like last week sometime. So it's been about, a week, four, four to five days ago, um, someone commented um, on, on one of my videos that I talk too much, right? And my, during my videos, well, I just want to explain to you all that the reason I talk so much during my videos is because these are training videos, right? Um, and I don't think that it would be beneficial for you all for me to um, actually perform a skill or demonstrate how to perform a skill without explaining anything, you know. So just keep in mind that, yes, I do talk a lot in my training videos, but it's because they are training videos. Come on, guys, right? They're training videos. So, um, you know, the talking, the explanations that I give, um, I feel are really helpful to you all, especially if you've already completed your training and it's been, you know, a good amount of time since, you know, you really had any refreshers. So the explanations that I give to you during um, the, you know, my demonstration videos um, is for that purpose only, okay? That purpose only so you can better understand why I do the actions that I do when I do them and how I do them, okay? So um, I thank that person for making that comment. Um, you know, I, I welcome all comments, um, but I, I think right now, you know, especially during my Real Talk series, I'm gonna be addressing uh, some of these comments, okay? So that is why I talk a lot of my videos. Now, there will be times where um, I will, um, demonstrate a training video with no explanations so you all can see exactly um, how you want to try to mimic, um, you know, performing the video during your testing. And I've done a few of those um, already. I think I have uh, quite a few of them actually on my YouTube channel. But for the most part, um, the majority of my videos will have verbalizations from me, okay? Because I need to explain to you, um, you know, 
how to do or perform certain actions and why um, you want to perform those actions, okay? Um, thank you, LaShonda. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm happy to know that you love my talking. Awesome. Hi, Shermaine. How are you? Hi, Anna. All right. Oh, okay. All right, Anna. Well, good luck to you on your training. Awesome. That is awesome. Oh, I won't, Veronica. I'm not going to stop talking. <laughs> I won't stop talking during my training videos. But um, like I said earlier, there will be some videos where <clears throat> I will not talk at all. Um, you know, well, I'll be talking, but not like giving step by step instructions on how and why and, you know, explaining when you should do uh, certain actions. And again, uh, these, you know, uninterrupted um, videos or non-explanatory videos um, is just for, you know, the main purpose behind those videos will be for y'all to see um, how you should actually like try to mimic, you know, um, performing those videos during testing. Hi, Brenda. I hope you're enjoying your Memorial Day. Yes. Guys, I am off for the summer, uh, kind of, sort of. I have a couple of contract um, assignments that I'm going to be, uh, you know, doing. Um, I'm going to be um, hopefully beginning in another week um, doing uh, training um, at, a, at a facility here in San Antonio, um, two, three-week fast-track programs for um, for their uh, nurse aid training program. So I got contracted out. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm excited about that. Um, this week, however, I'm going to be back in my classroom and I'm going to try to uh, produce and edit um, as many updated training videos as I can. Now, my focus is going to be on both Prometric and Pearson View. Headmaster, I kind of sort of put to the wayside right now because I'm learning that with Headmaster, um, their skills differ from state to state. I mean, they may have some skills that are the same, some that are similar, um, but you know, how to perform certain steps um, in the skills actually differ from state to state, um, but I'm not, you know, it's just temporarily that I'm putting, um, you know, headmaster on the back burner right now. And again, my focus is going to be on Prometric and Pearson View. So guys, um, I got to go check on something real quick. I'm going to be right back. In the meantime, don't leave this live stream. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and type in your questions and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate y'all for hanging in there with me. Brenda, I hope your recovery uh, from your surgery goes well and is quick, okay? Um, all right, so another topic that I wanted to discuss with you all in this live stream is I get, um, I receive a lot of emails um, at my Nurse Jar uh, Gmail email account. Um, from people, you know, asking for my help. Um, and that's what I'm here for, guys. I'm, I'm here to help you. But I wanted to um, discuss with you that, um, you know, you can't wait or you should not wait, 
you know, two or three days before your exam to reach out to me, okay, and ask for help. Um, because really, what are you going to learn in two to three days? Uh, you may, you know, be able to refresh on one, two, maybe even five uh, skills within that amount of time. But will that small or short amount of time actually um, make you competent in those skills? So you don't want to wait, okay? You don't want to wait. If you are currently in your nurse aid, nurse aid training program um, or you're waiting to start your training, please heed my words, okay? Preparation for your certification exam begins day one of your training, okay? Y'all hear me? Day one of your training, that is when you start prepping yourself for testing. So everything, all the information that your instructor gives you uh, during lecture um, and lab, that is for your written exam, okay? Everything, whether they read from a book, which I hope they don't, right? Uh, but whether they read from a book or, you know, they're using PowerPoints or they're using, you know, notes, that information is, um, that's the foundation that, you know, is, is one of the two goals for nurse aid training. That foundation, that information is building you a foundation um, as your role as a nurse aide. So you not only need to gain knowledge um, in, with that information, but you have to have a sound understanding of that information from your scope of practice to what your job description is to, you know, the different body systems uh, conditions, you know, the related conditions to the different body systems, to your basic nursing skills, especially when it comes to your vital signs, what's the normal range for all of your vital signs, okay, to personal care skills, to mental health, um, and to uh, social, mental health and social services, and also with, um, you know, conflict resolution. So you have to have a really good sound understanding of that because during your written examination, you're going to be, um, you know, asked questions regarding this information uh, with in two or three different types of scenarios, and you're going to have to know how you would respond. Um, so you cannot remotely memorize, which I know a lot of you all do. Right during training, you you memorize the information for testing, but for your certification test, you cannot use remote memorization because it's not like a vocabulary test. Okay, um, this is actual scenario-based questions. Uh, the majority of them are, and you have to know how you would respond as a nurse. Aide. Okay, so you have to understand, not just know, but understand and be able to connect that information with different live scenarios. Okay, that's where you're written. All right, so day one of your training. Now, the second part of your training should be, um, you know, of course, you're going to have your clinical. And remember, your clinical, when you go to your clinical rotation, that is, um, you know, helping you um, actually live out that information that was given to you, right, during lecture, okay, how you do things in real life. When you go to clinical, that's how you will want to uh, provide care uh, to your residents, okay? That's how you're going to do it in real life. Now, for testing, when it comes to the skills, um, you're not going to perform them how you would perform them in real life, okay? And a perfect example would be like your bed bath, okay? Um, 
you know, I get this question all the time, you know, uh, why are, why are you just, you know, cleaning one arm? Shouldn't you clean both arms? Shouldn't you clean the legs, the whole body, right? Well, in real life, when you do a complete, a complete bed bath, then yes, you do the entire body from head to toe. But you have to remember that this is testing, okay? And there are um, your authorized administrators has they have to abbreviate how you would you know perform certain skills for testing versus how you really perform them in real life. Just like with partial bed bath, right? Prometric has to excuse me the partial bed bath with back rub. Um, again, that skill is abbreviated or modified for testing, where you're only, you know, you're going to do the face, you're, uh, you know, including the eyes, you're going to do the ears, you're going to do the neck, the chest, you know, the tummy, the flanks, you do the back, and then one arm, hand, and underarm, right? You don't do both. Why not? Because they have to modify. Y'all are being timed. And trust me, you're not going to be able to complete, um, you know, a, a, you know, a true partial bed bath um, uh, in the amount of time that, you know, you're going to be given uh, for testing. And remember, you're not timed on each individual skill. You're timed on the skills exam as a whole. So for Prometric, you get anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes, depending on your skill set. Pearson View, you get 30 minutes, okay? Just, that's it. No matter what skill set you have, you have 30 minutes to complete it. Um, and then for Headmaster, I think Headmaster has like a little time frame. I'm not sure, you know, it's anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes also or something like that, Okay. Um, let me look at these comments real quick. Congratulations, Charmaine. Awesome. Congratulations. Um, Anna, it all depends on who your authorized administrator is. With Pearson View, because 10 years ago, uh, Texas was, you know, under the authorized administrator um, of Pearson View. Um, Pearson View, the only thing Pearson View has added is electronic blood pressure. Um, and that's only for certain states, okay? Um, and then they also modified some of the steps, but for the most part, it's the same. I can't speak on Prometric because this is actually our second year, I believe, 2020, 2021, 21, 22, yeah. So this is actually our second year with Prometric. So I don't know, you know, how Prometric was, you know, years back. Um, and I'm just learning about Headmaster. But if you're testing on the Pearson view, again, um, the majority of the skills are the same. Uh, the only skill that has been added is electronic blood pressure. So you have two blood pressures, electronic and manual. Uh, only select states are tested on electronic blood pressure and all other states are uh, tested on manual, okay? Um, I think they took the critical element step out of bedpan. Um, and so just little, you know, little changes like that with Pearson View. Um, Oh, thank you, Maria. Thank you. I, I think all of y'all are angels as well. Okay. So now with your skills. Okay. So we talked about the written. Okay. And just, you have to keep in mind when your, your instructor is lecturing you on that information, that is information on what you need to know and truly understand as a nurse aid, because this is, uh, you know, what you need to do, how you need to do it, when you need to do it, and why you need to do it in real life, okay, in real life. Now, when you all start learning your testable skills, you have to be able to separate, you know, how you perform this nursing task in real life and how you are required to perform this nursing skill during your testing, okay? 
Um, and a lot of mistakes that I see instructors make is that they, they intermix or they mesh together how you perform things in real life um, with, you know, what's required of you to, uh, or how it's required of you to perform the skill for testing. So that's one of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of instructors make. And you don't want to do that because now you have your student performing extra steps, you know, unnecessary steps. Um, and that's eating up their time, right? So when, as if you're an instructor and you're on here, um, please, when you're teaching your students um, how to perform those testable skills, whether you're under Headmaster, Pearson View, Credentia, you know, the American Red Cross or Prometric, um, go by the candidate, uh, you know, skills list or the candidate um, handbook, right? To look at those required steps and only train them to perform that skill based on those steps. Don't be adding nothing in. Don't be adding nothing like, you know, how they're going to perform it in real life because you're really, um, the only thing you're doing is taking away from their time when you're, you know, um, having them to do these unnecessary additional steps. Hi, Jasmine. Happy Memorial Day, Jasmine, to you also. Yeah, and it's, um, you know, and, and that's really, that really confuses you as a student. But as long as you know, because, you know, I'm not going to tell you um, I, and I never will. I never step on any instructor's toes, right? Because as instructors, we all teach and train differently. Um, so I will never tell you don't listen to your instructor, right? I won't ever, 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 ever tell you that, right? Um, but you as a student need to know that there is a difference. Okay, and I'm talking real talk to you now, and I'm hoping there are some instructors uh, in this live stream. Um, there is a difference between how you perform nursing tasks in real life and how you are required to perform a testable skill during your manual skills exam. Okay, it's a big difference. Okay, um, so. Um, so that that was uh, one comment that I wanted to like address, you know, about, you know, why are you not doing both arms? You know, shouldn't you do both arms uh, for testing? No. In real life, yes. But for testing, you're not required to do both arms. OK, uh, for Prometric, just make sure you read your instruction skill card or your skills instruction card, uh, because, you know, it may have which arm you need to uh, clean. OK. Um, if it doesn't, then it's your choice, you know, either the right arm or the left arm, okay? Um, and also, um, you know, when you're, like, you're looking at me now, right? This is my right hand, which if you're looking at me, it looks like my left, right? So sometimes you have to get in the same position as your resident, right, to figure out, okay, over here is the left arm and over here is the right arm. OK, so you will not perform the skill on the wrong limb, OK, especially when it comes to the range of motion exercises. OK, all right. Um, another comment that I wanted to address was. Um, um, has to deal with the range of motion exercises. Uh, someone had asked the question if, you know, you need it to. Um, actually tell the person the name of the exercise. And the question is, no, you don't, okay? Um, all you have to do is explain to them how you are going to move your their limb, okay? So, of course, when you're explaining the procedure, you're going to tell them, you know, I'll be exercising your right arm or your left arm, or I'll be exercising your right leg or your left leg, okay? Um, and then if it's the arm uh, for Pearson view, you have uh, the one um, 
range of motion exercise which for the arm, which is for your shoulder, right? You have abduction and adduction and then flexion and extension, right? Bringing the arm back down. For prometric, you actually have two arm exercises, okay? Separate exercises. So for one is for the shoulder where you have abduction and adduction and flexion and extension. And then the second separate arm exercise is for the elbow and wrist, right? So you have flexion and extension of the elbow and then uh, flexion and hyperextension of the wrist, right? So um, especially with you prometric testers, okay, um, you have to be very um, conscientious of when they give you that, you know, your skills instruction, whether you're going to be um, exercising the shoulder or if you're going to be exercising the elbow and the wrist, okay? And then for your, your legs, um, you know, you have your uh, flexion and extension. So you're bending the person's knee uh, towards the head of the bed and then bringing it back down. And then dorsi, excuse me, dorsi flex and plantar flex of the foot, right? So you're exercising the ankle, okay, of the foot. Um, Okay, so this is another, I'm, I'm glad you asked this, Jasmine. Um, for pro, are you testing under Prometric, Jasmine? If you don't mind me asking, just give me a thumbs up if you're testing under Prometric. At most of the Prometric test sites, the call light is actually going to be a jump rope, okay, that's hanging like on the wall or tied on the bed somewhere, right? Um, so, yeah, okay, I, I thought so. Okay, so with uh, with prometric, it doesn't matter, you know, who you're testing under. Y'all will notice in all of my training videos when I do the opening procedures. You know, that's the knocking on the door, addressing the resident by name and title, introducing yourself by name and title, and explaining the procedure. Y'all will notice that I give the person their call light. OK, and I do that for a reason, because when you come back um, to actually perform whatever skill it is that you're going to perform, um, you may end up forgetting, right, to give that person the call light at the very end of your skill before you say skill complete. So as long as that person is still holding on to that call light, or it's laid where it's within reach of that person, meaning I'm gonna put my hand down here. I'm gonna use this water bottle, right? If my hand is here and you place the call light here, it's easily reachable to me, right? I can easily reach this call light. But if my hand is here and you have the call light, you know, down here, I may not be able to reach all the way down here, or if you have it up, at the pillow, right? So if it's a live person, remember that person is live. Even if you place it in their hand, right? we humans, we get tired of holding stuff, right? So we may place it down. So you're still um, in the end responsible for ensuring that that call light is within that person's reach. Um, but again, uh, you'll see me doing it at the very beginning. Um, and the reason I do that, and I train my students to do that, um, is so, you know, you're going to be a little nervous during testing and there are going to be some steps that you forget, but that call light is one step that you do not want to forget, okay? So even if you don't do it, but the NAE sees that the call light is within that person's reach, you will uh, still get credit for that step, okay? The same thing with me, you know, making sure the bed is in a low safe position, bed wheels are up, you know, I try to do things in the most logical way, right? So for Pearson View and Prometric, your first skill is going to be hand hygiene, no matter what, okay? That is going to be your first skill. So what do you say to the person? You know, just let them know, hey, you know, I'm going to be, you know, knock, knock, knock. Good morning, Mrs. Jones. My name is Julie. Um, I'm your CNA. Today, I'm going to be providing you with care, you know, blah, 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 right? You, 
here's your call light. Bed is in a low safe position. Bed rules are locked. I'm going to go ahead and provide you with privacy. Is there anything I can do for you before I come back? Um, you know, or before I leave? Um, you know, person says no, or if it's a mannequin, right? They ain't gonna say nothing, right? But anyways, just say, okay, well, I'm going to go wash my hands and I'll be back. And then Pearson View and Prometric Test Takers, that's when you will actually go to the sink and perform hand hygiene. Wash your hands with running water and soap. Once you complete hand hygiene, you will say skill complete. And then you will go back to that person, knock on the door again, as if it was your very first time seeing that person, okay? So you either go back to the live person if you have to perform a skill um, on the live peer person. And with Pearson View, your second skill is usually um, a, a measurement skill. So it's either gonna be weight, uh, respirations or pulse, radio pulse or blood pressure. That's for both Pearson View and Credentia. Um, with uh, your, when it comes to urinary output, urinary output is usually towards the end um, of Pearson View and Credentia skills test. Okay, so it's usually like the third or fourth uh, skill if you have are required to um, uh, perform urinary output as your measurement skill. Now, with Prometric, your measurement skill is actually going to be your third skill. Okay, so remember, indirect care behaviors, you're, you know, evaluate on that, evaluated on those five indirect care behaviors throughout your entire skills exam. Okay, so that's one skill you're being evaluated on. Remember that very first skill you're going to be performed is going to be hand hygiene with actual running water and soap. Your second skill is usually um, a bedside skill, you know, range of motion or transfer or ambulance, something. And then that uh, third skill will be one of your measurement skills. Again, for Prometric, uh, you have radial pulse, you have respirations, you have feeding, okay, that's a measurement and recording skill, and also. Um, empties urinary drainage bag and uh, measures and records urinary output, right? So uh, Pearson View, Credentia, you have five measurement and recording skills. Prometric, you have four uh, measurement and recording skills, okay? Um, and then for Headmaster, Headmaster has four to five mandatory skills and all of their candidates will be required to perform one of those mandatory skills. Now those four or five mandatory skills incorporates hand hygiene at the end of that skill. So if you're testing under headmaster, your first skill will not be hand hygiene. Your first skill will be an actual bedside skill, okay? One of those mandatory skills. I think it's, um, y'all have bedpan, um, peri care, catheter care, and something else. I, I forget the other mandatory skill that incorporates hand hygiene. Um, and then headmaster, you have to use actual hand sanitizer, right? Whenever you're required to wash your hands, you, you have to use actual hand sanitizer. For Pearson View, Credentia, and Prometric, you don't have to use actual hand sanitizer. All you have to do Whenever you should wash your hands, besides the initial hand hygiene skill, um, all you have to do is verbalize washing hands, okay? All right. Um, uh, thank you, Jasmine. Thank you. But remember, listen to your instructor, okay? Because I don't want you going up in there saying, well, Nurse Jar told me to do it this way. No, 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 no. OK, um, again, you know, I step on no instructor's toes. So, you know, however your instructor is instructing you, you know, you got to follow your instructor's lead. But just keep in mind to the forefront of your mind that, you know, there are, um, you know, um, differences between how you perform nursing tasks in real life and how you are required to perform 
uh, your testable skills, okay? So you won't be eaten into your time with unnecessary um, steps, okay? Okay, and then there was one more, I'm trying to remember now, one more comment or question Ooh, that was made and I can't remember um, because it was one that I wanted to address in this live stream. Let me think for a second here. Oh, okay. I remember it. So someone had asked, um, you know how it is with, with bedpan or, um, you know, with uh, Prometric, the uh, making of the occupied bed, right, while the person is still lying in the bed. Um, someone had asked if they could ask the person to raise his or her hips. Now, in my videos, you see that is how I perform it. But I also uh, tell you that you can always turn the person to the side, okay? Now, if you're with, um, if you're with uh, Pearson View um, or Credentia, um, you need to raise that side rail, whatever side you're going to be turning the person, you need to raise that side rail before you turn the person, okay? With Prometric, side rails are not emphasized, okay? So you will not have to raise the side rail. However, what you need to do is instruct that person to move closer towards you. If it's a live person, that's all you have to do. Hey, you know, can you move closer towards me? Okay. If it's a mannequin, you'll have to, of course, manually move the mannequin closer towards you before you actually turn them. Because what Prometric is looking at is after you turn that person, uh, they want to make sure that that person is not uh, close, you know, dangerously close to the edge of the bed. So that is the why behind you having that person move closer towards you or you manually moving the mannequin closer towards you before you actually turn them away from you, okay? Um, so Florida is pro-metric um, and it's going to be 60 questions, okay? Uh, 10 of those questions are not scored. So they're just 10 of your questions on your pro-metric exam are what I like to call filler questions. And they use those 10 questions for statistical purposes. You know, maybe they're thinking about um, including, uh, you know, these questions on an up, you know, an upcoming update of the written exam. So you're really only scored on 50 um, of your questions. The same for Pearson View and uh, Credentia. You're Written exam is 70 questions, but only 60 of those questions are scored. Now, the bad thing is, is that you don't know, you know, which 10 are the filler questions. So you have to answer all of those questions to the best of your abilities, okay? Um, and also, Alpha in Florida, Y'all are tested on hand hygiene twice. So at the very beginning, you're going to have one NAE evaluate you on washing your hands with actual running water and soap. And then at the end of your skills exam, um, you're going to have a second NAE evaluate uh, your washing your hands with actual water and soap. Florida is the only state under Prometric that does that, okay, where you'll be evaluated on hand hygiene twice. All other prometric states just once, and that's at the beginning of your skills exam. You're welcome, Elsa. Um, well, it, it doesn't matter um, because you're, you know, with prometric, you have to place down a clean barrier, okay? Uh, Pearson View and Credentia, you are not required to place a clean barrier um, over the or on the overbed table. Okay, Pearson View and Credentia only. Prometric, 
you are required to. So it's not a matter of, oh, you know, if you want to do it or not, that is a required step. So you have to place that clean barrier, whether you use a towel or a chucks pad, it doesn't matter. Okay. But you have to place the clean barrier over that table before you actually start placing your supplies on the overbed table. Now, in my videos, you'll see that I place um, the used washcloths on the side of the basin. And the reason I do that is because I still have clean, <clears throat> excuse me, I still have clean um, supplies on my table, right? So, you know, if you want to get down to the nitty gritty with infection control, you know, you don't want to set dirty next to clean, right? So, um, you'll see in my videos where I actually place uh, the used washcloths um, over on the side of the basin instead of just setting them back down on the clean barrier on, you know, the overbed table with all my other clean supplies that I have not yet used. Now, <clears throat> Jasmine asked the question, you know, does it matter? During testing, no, it doesn't matter. Okay, so you can place them on the sides, over the sides of the basin, like I do in my video, or you can put them um, on the bedside table on top of the clean barrier. Uh, I will just keep them away from your other clean supplies that you have. Okay, but it doesn't matter. Okay, you're welcome, Jasmine. Okay, guys, I'm gonna get ready to go. So if y'all don't have any more questions, again, um, if you think that you're gonna be liking uh, the live streams or there, some of them will be recorded, pre-recorded videos of my new series, Real Talk. Um, again, I'm gonna be talking about, you know, training itself, um, you know, best ways for you to learn um, you know, instructors, you know, best ways to teach um, and just being real with you, right? I'm Because I'm, I'm, I'm one to let you know, don't come to me two or three days before your scheduled exam and say, hey, Nurse Jar, can you help me? Because it's going to be like, boo, like, <laughs> what, what can you do in two or three days? Okay, especially if you, you're telling me you need help with all the skills, like you can't cram it. You can't, okay? You cannot. Guys, I, I'm still offering my uh, online virtual coaching sessions. Um, you know, I don't have the, the link. Uh, later on, um, I'll probably put the, add the link in the description. Um, so if you need help, um, you know, you want to invest in your future, uh, you know, go ahead and book a session, okay, an hour session with me. Um, sometimes you may need more than one session, so keep that in mind, especially um, if, you know, depending on what your challenges are with the written test and or with the manual skills exam, uh, sometimes one session is not going to get it for you. You may need more than one session, okay? Um, also, uh, my membership, I have the Elite not the elite, I'm sorry, the investor, the elite investor, and also the inimitable investor. Uh, with the elite investor, you're going to get members only live streams. Not elite, I'm sorry, with the investor, members only live streams. With the um, elite investor, you'll not only get members only live streams, but also members only videos. Yes. And with the inimitable, um, investor membership. You'll get the members only live streams, the members only videos. You'll get early access to the majority of the videos that I upload here on YouTube, meaning you as an inimitable investor member will be able to view the videos for one full week before any other subscribers will, okay? Um, you'll also get priority responses from me. So I usually try to respond to comments and questions within a 24 to 48. Sometimes it may take 72 hours for me to respond. But if you are an inimitable um, investor member, I will prioritize 
uh, my response to you within four hours, okay? And um, again, now if you, you know, making comments at two o'clock in the morning, come on now, okay? That priority response is not going to apply, okay? Um, and then you um, also, um, the part that I'm really excited about that, I think I have one inimitable member um, right now, um, and that is you can actually um, do some video uh, collaborations with me, you know, maybe do an introductory to, uh, you know, one of my upcoming videos, or, you know, I can have you um, add you as a host on a live stream, right? Um, or maybe you can share, you know, some of your um, you know, training experience, or if you've tested before, your testing experience, right? So those are the three membership tiers. Uh, investor membership is two ninety nine monthly. The elite investor is four ninety nine monthly, and then the inimitable investor is nine dollars and ninety nine cents monthly. And of course, with each a tier, you end up getting more perks, right? So the intermittable investor member, you're going to receive more perks than the elite investor. Elite investor, you're receiving more exclusive perks than the um, investor member, okay? I'm also thinking about getting some t-shirts made up, some nurse jar t-shirts um, that I'll, you know, be giving away um, you know, with some of my live streams, and it, it'll probably be just my members only live streams that I'll be giving these t shirts away. So I'm looking into that also. So a lot of big changes and new additions to my YouTube channel, all for you. Yes, all for you. Okay, let me look at these comments real quick before um, I leave. Elsa, um, you need help, baby. I tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my email um, address in here. Okay, make sure that's right. There's my email ad address, nursejar1323 at gmail.com. Um, if you're having challenges, just email me, let me know. Um, what your challenges are, and then that way I'll be able to better guide you. Um, you know, I can, you know, tell you whether or not, you know, the um, hourly virtual coaching sessions will help you. Remember, you got to pay for them, okay? They're $55. Um, I did have, um, they're $55 an hour. I did have a coupon I think it was 20% off, but that expired April 30th. Um, but if I get a lot of people needing um, these virtual sessions, and if you can't afford the $55 an hour, uh, let me know. If I get a lot of people emailing me saying, hey, you know, Nurse Jar, I really need these virtual sessions, but right now I can't afford the $55 an hour, I can drop it down uh, to how I did with the introductory price. Um, at $25 an hour, okay? All right, and we got some creep up here. Um, let's see, there we go. Jumping in on here. Let's see, let me get, let me erase all of this. That's why I don't like, um, let's see. I'm sorry, guys, there, I had to report report that user. That's why I don't like making my videos open to non-subscribers um, because of these, uh, they just dumb, stupid, like ignorant, like who does that? Like get on your, get on somebody's live stream and starts making explicit, explicit sexual comments. It's like this, that person is sick in the head, I tell you. Um, let's see. I'm just going through these um, comments now, making sure I didn't miss any. Let's see. 
Okay, Elta, I put my email address um, in the chat section, okay? Um, Georgia, I want to say it's Credentia, if I'm not mistaken. I think Georgia is Credentia. Yeah, Credentia or Pearson. And, and keep in mind, Credentia and Pearson View, they have been partners forever. Um, it's just that now Credentia is stepping off on their own, well, not really stepping off on their own. They're still partnered with Pearson View, but Credentia is actually taking over uh, some of the states that they both once shared. Um, and so I think with Georgia, oh, geez, I don't know. But you know what? You can, you can, um, I forget. And I actually had an online session, virtual session with someone from Georgia. Let me see real quick. So yeah, that's what I thought. Georgia is um, under Credentia or Pearson View. Okay, they're really one and the same. Um, hi, Cynthia, how are you? Uh, where are you at, Cynthia? Amaka, I know. Um, I really, oh, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, let's see. Hey, Francis, congratulations. Oh, thank you. I, I, guys, I'm telling y'all, when y'all tell me that, you know, it was my videos that were instrumental in your passing, man, that's what keeps me motivated to, to continue you know, continue with this channel and, and do what I need to do for y'all. That is awesome. Um, there we go. Oh, awesome. Oh, and also with Prometric, um, like uh, Pearson View and Credentia, your dressing is going to be a short sleeve shirt. Prometric, is going to be a long sleeve button down shirt, okay? So, um, you know, if your instructors are using short sleeve shirts, like I've been using short sleeve shirts, right? Um, and I was just told this year that Prometric actually uses the long sleeve shirts. So um, next year I'm gonna start with, you know, uh, training my students with the long sleeve shirts, but just, you know, keep in mind, it's the same, a shirt is a shirt is a shirt, right? Um, the long sleeve shirt just may be a little hard um, for you putting it on that second arm, okay? But remember that second arm uh, when dressing is the strong arm, so you won't need to like, um, you know, maintain support on that arm, okay? So just bend that arm back if you got to, to put that long sleeve shirt on, it, okay? But not the weak arm, you have to support that weak arm, okay? underneath the wrist and elbow joint at the same time, okay? In Dubai, wow, awesome. I heard Dubai is beautiful. I'm glad you're doing okay, Cynthia. That is awesome. Okay, guys, I'm gonna get ready to go. Once I get the t-shirts made, I'm gonna like do a quick video. And remember, those giveaways are going to be for members only. So if you have not signed up for a member tier, go ahead and do so, okay? Because I got some nice perks coming, nice perks coming for members. I appreciate all of y'all, I really do. Um, especially for those of you who refer my channel out uh, to your classmates, to your friends, to your instructors. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm almost at 30,000 subscribers. That was my initial goal to get, reach 30,000 subscribers. It's taken me a couple of years. My next goal is 50,000. So y'all keep making those referrals, okay? Keep making those referrals. I'm going to keep giving you uh, pristine and uh, good quality videos, training videos, okay? 
I would love to visit Dubai. I would, I would love to visit Dubai. Um, I'm actually planning a trip to um, Nigeria uh, to visit a friend in Nigeria uh, this upcoming fall. So I'm hoping everything goes through because I've never been to Africa and I just, I want to go to Africa. Um, so yeah, so I'm planning that trip. Um, and maybe, I don't know, the following year, I could try. You're from Nigeria? Are you serious? I, where I Because I'm going to Lagos. My friend is in Lagos. How, have, how is Lagos? <laughs> You're welcome, Maria. You're welcome. Wow. I never heard of that. Wow. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and isn't Amaka and Ibu, the Ibu language, Amaka is hand? Lagos is great. Okay, I've been watching, um, I've been watching a lot of Veronica is from Nigeria. Oh my gosh. Yes, and Ibu, but it also means something else, Amaka. And it depends on like the tones you use. Because I've been studying the language too, the Ibu language. So Amaka is hand, and I, I can't remember what else it means. But yeah, oh, that is awesome. See, something you can teach me Ibu. Yes, but I've been watching. Um, I've been watching. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so what is hand? I thought Amaka was hand also. Oh, thank you, Cynthia. But I've been watching uh, YouTube videos uh, just to try to get myself familiar with Legos, and it's a lot of people. Enugu. Oh, awesome. Okay. Hand is Aka. That's right. Aka. Okay. Aka. Yeah, I used to know like all the um, the body parts. I, was, I have my flashcards and everything, and I taking lessons on Verbling, and I actually got to get back on Verbling. My uh, teacher's name is uh, Uju, and I know I'm missing her, and I know she's missing me, but I still have a couple of lessons that I need to um, uh, schedule in Verbling. Hi, Maria. Oh, awesome. Yeah, Maria, just do your best, sweetheart. Um, you know, when it when it comes to the verbalizations, you know, the language, you do have to, you know, speak in English, but just do the best you can, sweetheart. Okay, do the best you can. All right. Okay, with your English. All right, guys, I'm gonna get ready to go again. Don't forget, I have membership tiers on my channel uh, with some exclusive perks the higher tier. So I have investor, elite investor, and then an amenable investor, $2.99 a month for investor membership, $4.99 a month for elite investor membership, and $9.99 a month for an um membership. I think I have nine members so far. I want that membership to grow, okay? The bigger, the more memberships I have, the more perks I'm going to start adding on, okay? Um, and, and then after this video processes, I'll put in the link. Well, you know what? Let me see if I can do that now. So then I won't have to worry about it um, later. I can put in the link um, to where you can actually... Uh, book your uh, virtual coaching session. Let's see. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna put the, uh, my link uh, where you can book your virtual coaching session with me. Um, I gotta look at the calendar because I think I had some daytime slots, but I think I'm going to change them all to evening time uh, because I, I got a contract 
to actually teach during the daytime for a three week fast track program. So I'm gonna have to change the times. Oh, thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, sweetheart. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Okay, again, if y'all cannot afford the $55 per hour, let me know. If I get enough emails saying, hey, you know, Nurse Jar, can you like drop it down to 25 for, you know, however long, um, let me know and I'll be more than willing to do that. Okay, but if I just get one person saying, you know, drop it down, then that's letting me know that, you know, everybody else is okay with the $55 an hour and it's going to stay like that, okay? But I can do another special, okay, if y'all need me. Okay, guys, I got to go. I love you all. Uh, stay safe this Memorial weekend and I'll talk to you all later. Ciao.